stark And it's hard to see What you are doing Here in the ruins And where this will lead Oh, but I know moment and see your hand on it and know you were here and I'll testify of the battles you've won how you were my portion when there wasn't enough and I'll testify the seas that we've crossed, the waters you parted, the ways that I've walked, singing, oh, 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 oh my God did not fail, yeah. oh, 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 it's the song. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord for you gathering with us on this morning. We want to say that we appreciate the fact that you have allowed us to just come into your home, uh, your car, your vehicle, uh, your residence, wherever you are staying at. Thank you so much for receiving. I pray that the word that came last week, the portion of it, or the message that we gave last week were, were, was a blessing to you. Uh, I pray that you received what it was the Holy Spirit was doing and saying at that time. I want to uh, thank all of you for your prayers and your support and for your concern for us. And I believe that our best is yet to come. I want you to be mindful of the fact that we are still in a pandemic and that uh, we owe it to our brothers and sisters, we owe it to each other uh, to do all we can to make sure that they are safe. We are one another's keeper. And I want us to be mindful of that. I want us to consider the fact that we have to do more than just verbally uh, connect here. We have to uh, make sure that we're doing all we can to make sure every person is safe. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you again for your prayer support, your presence, and your financial support. Thank you so very much. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Now, I want to continue the message that we started last week, the host, excuse me, the guest. Uh, the name of the message is the guest. And uh, one of the reasons I mentioned the host uh, is the fact that we will talk some about the host to, to uh, bring about a point here. The guest was Jesus Christ who came into the house of the host who was Simon. And it, it would seem that uh, Simon who was the one who invited him into his home showed the least appreciation for him. Uh, it is possible, very possible for us at times to invite the Lord into our affairs, into our lives, and yet do not appreciate what he means and what he, what he brings into our lives and the things that he's trying to uh, keep us from that would be hurtful and harmful in our lives and, and or the fact that he is a shining light into every room of our heart making us aware of our need for him, our sinfulness, our, our fragile, aspect, fragile aspects of our lives. And so we need 
to know that the one that we invite into our lives, and we're talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is coming in because we invited him, and he wants to come in. But we have got to want him to be there once we invite him in. And it seems to me that the one who invited him did not really know him or appreciate him or consider how much he needed him. So though he came into Simon's house, Simon was not the one who received the benefits of his presence as much as one who had invited herself. And so we are going to go into the scriptures and we're going to talk some from that premise and let uh, shine some light and let the Lord show us what it is that he wants us to see on this morning. In the, in the book of St. Luke, if you will, again, chapter 7, uh, this time, this time we will uh, start at verse 40. And we brought, we read up to a certain place and we, we ministered some up unto almost, we were just a little past this right here, but we want to go a little further. There are some details that I believe the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us about the character of these two people that were uh, in that house and who had uh, interaction with the Lord and yet uh, one benefited and the other I hope I hope the one that didn't benefit from it spiritually uh, had his eyes opened about himself uh, so let's read here verse 40 says and Jesus answering said unto him Simon I have somewhat to say unto thee and he saith master say on there was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. When they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into your house or thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with, her te with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. But the woman hath, this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. I want, to, I want to talk a little bit about the host, the one who invited the guests and the one who benefited the guests. That, quite frankly, there may, we may find that there are two hosts here, the one who invited him, the one who served him. And so we have to recognize that one owned the house and invited him, but failed to capitalize on the uh, fact that he needed to minister, serve, appreciate, and value the one that he had invited to his house. 
The host was the person who receives. Not only does he receive the person into his home, he also has the responsibility of entertaining this person, making sure he or she is fed and taken care of. And although one, the one who owned the house and, invi and invited him, invited him into this home, did not, did not really operate from the premise of a host. God had someone there who needed to do what Simon felt that he didn't need to do. And she's unnamed. We said that last week. She's unnamed. Her situation is that uh, she is a sinner. Because Simon said it last week he, that, that he found problems, he found fault with Jesus because Jesus allowed this woman to touch his head, his feet, you know, all of this ministry that she, she heaped up on him. Amen. The fact is that Simon knew her and could readily point her out as a sinner. Well, well, let's see here. She's a sinner. It's amazing. She, she, she does not argue the point. There's no place in Scripture where we see that she argues the point that she is indeed a sinner, one who sinned. Amen. She's sinned. What does, that, what does that mean? Well, she is one who has transgressed divine law. She has done some things that uh, are, are, are a transgression of God's will, violation of some religious or moral principles. She's done some things that are reprehensible deserving of rebuke. In other words, glory to God, her sins are out there. She's, she's done some stuff that put her in a pretty bad situation with God. All of us have. Let's own that. She could be, and I said it last week, she could be any woman. She could be any person. All of us have sinned. For the scripture says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. And I said this last week, and I want to bring us up to date that uh, the fact is that these two people, both of these people who are operating or will operate as hosts, glory to God, have both have the same need. They're both sinners. They're both sinners. The fact is one knows it, the other one don't. Simon has no idea that he is just as sinful as she is. And she, he may not have committed, amen, a lot of the things that she's done, but she has recognized her need to be forgiven. She has recognized the fact that her sins are ugly, her lifestyle, her transgression of God. Somewhere she's heard this master teacher teach. Somewhere she's coming to the place where he was ministering and the word that, words that came out of his mouth had brought her under conviction. I believe that. I don't believe that we should just, I don't believe that we should just go to church, amen, and, and just be spectators. I, I believe we should go to hear the word of God. We should allow the word of God to, to enter into our hearing and into our hearts. Uh, and this woman somewhere Glory to God, a sinner, a person who sins. She's a sinner, one who sins. All of us, because that's what a sinner is, one who sins. Uh, she, this is practical. Glory to God, and, and, and not just one thing. A sinner gives us the indication that she, she continually sinned, uh, and it was a practice for her. She's a transgressor. She knows she's a transgressor. Glory to God. The guest that's in the house knows what she is. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Can I tell you this? God knows who you are. Amen. He knows who I am. He knew what I was before I came to know 
him before I received his forgiveness for my sins. He, it, was not, it was not like he did not know. He was fully aware that I was a sinner. And this woman was a sinner. That's, she was a sinner. The sad fact about it, when you are labeled, you're labeled a sinner or whatever it is, your indiscretion, your transgression may be. There are people who won't let you forget <laughs> where you have been. She was a sinner, but right now in this house, she's operating as one who appreciates and values the presence of one who has shown her love. Oh, my Lord. These Pharisees, the word Pharisee has to do with the word separatist. In other words, he has separated himself from others. Glory to God. He feels that he is probably better than this woman right here. And he's a separatist. Ah, he separated himself, one who has withdrawn and succeeded from others. Uh, he pro he's a member of a group that has succeeded from a larger group, one who advocated political and religious separation. And so he, he invites Jesus, but amen, it's not because he believed on the Lord. He invited him into his house, maybe to ask questions as Nicodemus did. Nicodemus came for Nicodemus first came to the Lord in St. John chapter, uh, St. John, glory to God, chapter three, I believe. Uh, the Bible says he came to ask questions. He came and at nighttime to ask questions. This man invited, a little bit more bolder, invited Jesus to come to his house, did not serve him, did not minister to him, and yet Glory to God, maybe he needed to ask questions uh, and or maybe he invited him so that he could uh, find some fault and find some way to accuse him. Uh, the Pharisees were not friendly toward Jesus. They felt that he was uh, somewhat of a maverick of sort. Uh, who violated certain principles and did not honor the law, so to speak. And we know that that's not true. The Bible says, Jesus said, I did not come, amen, he didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. He is the fulfillment of the law. Well, this Pharisee does not know that he is in need of being forgiven because he believes his works his good works, his connection to some group of believers or a higher level of spiritual people that keeps him from needing a savior. He is in serious trouble. He's in serious trouble. He does not know that he or has not realized that his good works will not save him. His position, title, notoriety, whatever those things are, will not save him, will not give him brownie points with the Lord. Hallelujah. He needs help. They both are in need of a savior. And yet one feels that he's okay based on the fact that he has through works, through works have kept himself from uh, doing certain things because he felt like his, his goodness or uh, his relationship with God was based on his good works, his good works. Uh, her, on the other hand, knew that she didn't have any good works. Her, she, so she couldn't, she couldn't rest on her laurels. Uh, she had to recognize that she was morally bankrupt. She's bankrupt. Glory to God. She is lacking in a lot of things and quality. She has no hope. She's discredited. Amen. She has uh, this, she, she, she has no uh, this, she has no credit as far as resources or in her character. Her character is bad. 
it would seem that the whole town knows that she's got a bad reputation. Lord, I thank you. She knows that she's got a bad reputation. She knows that her name is not good. Scripture seems to point it out because there is no name for her. We don't have a name for her. We don't have a name for this woman. Her name, according to Scripture, and according to, uh, for as Scripture is concerned, is woman. And we look at that, but the Scripture says she's a sinner. Simon says that she is a sinner. And she is a transgressor. She's a woman who sins. And a lot of the times, glory to God, hallelujah, that has to do with moral behavior, uh, immoral behavior. So morally, glory to God, she's, she's, uh, she's, she's, she's really lacking in morals. Uh, according to moral rules, she lives outside of the moral boundaries. She's not living uprightly. She's not, glory to God, she's not virtually or practically, amen, upright. Amen. To all intended, all intended purposes, she is a loose woman. Hallelujah. What do you mean she's loose? She's without morals. Oh, she dealing, she's not dealing with, amen, uh, chaste behavior. She's not walking in that. Uh, she's, her conduct is suspect. Conduct is all wrong. Doesn't say how she got there. Don't say how she got there, but it, it, there's something missing. Something has brought her to a place that where she's living loosely. She's living outside of the boundaries of, the, of God's word. She may not be happy because when she comes under conviction, she seemingly follows the Lord to a place that where he has been invited to. Hallelujah. So she has, she has, uh, she has relaxed principles, principles of right and wrong, her, they're off key. They're, 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 they're all messed up. That is, she seems to have gotten to a place to where she, good and good and right conduct is kind of out the door. Uh, she may even have crossed the line in her sexual conduct. Oh my. She may have Glory to God, live immoral with sinning with men and so forth and glory to God. So she's got some issues going on with her that, that's really messed up. But when she came, seemingly she's come into, the, into a place where she met Jesus or heard him and followed him and probably not knowing how to fix the mess that she's in. She does what she's always done. She finds a way to give. With other men, she may have given her body, and given time and so forth, and all kinds of things may have gone, gone on, but she's immoral. She's, all of these things have only led her to a place of darkness, hurt, glory to God, a place where she is so far away from God. So destitute, so bankrupt. Well, one of the things we recognize about that, her, we recognize that people won't forget what you are or where you've been. Even sometime after you've come to know the Lord, people have a tendency to go back, pull up your past. And Simon, not looking at what could be transpiring as she's weeping and broken behind the Lord, tears falling from her eyes. All he knows is she's a sinner. And Jesus may not be who he proclaims to be. Jesus may be a, a fraud because if he truly knew 
excuse me, he truly was a prophet, he would know that the woman who is touching him is a sinner. The woman who's shedding tears from her eyes, washing his feet with those tears, she's a sinner. The woman who's wiping his feet with the hairs of her head, she's a sinner. The woman who's kissing his feet, hallelujah, is a sinner. He does not recognize the fact that this woman is under conviction. The Holy Spirit is, has brought her under conviction that something is going on in her heart. And she is performing at the same time a duty that he should have performed. He should have been the one that, that, that came and did all of these things, that he washed his feet and anointed, uh, washed, washed his feet and anointed his head and all of these things that she's doing to his feet, gave him a kiss, amen. All of these things should have been Simon's to do, but he, and, uh, through, whether he threw himself directly or through his servant, but he did none of those things. But this woman under conviction who recognizes her unworthiness to be in his presence, hallelujah, and probably the fact that she don't have words to say because of the depth of her sins. Ah, glory to God. People won't let you forget where you have been. People won't let you forget sometimes what you've done. And this is sometimes, and we have to be careful in our churches that we don't allow ourselves to be judgmental. We have to be, glory to God, loving. We have, to, we have to be an example of, 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 of love, I mean genuine love, and, and, and embrace people, although they may be messed up. We have got to find a way to show them the love of God. Hallelujah. And so here is a sinner who is operating now as the host. She is showing uh, love to the, to the guests. She's ministering to him. Uh, how ugly her past may be. It's ugly. It's probably dark and ugly, and people probably point the finger at her, or have pointed the finger at her, and laughed at her, or shunned her. Uh, but here she is, may never get this chance again, but she's making the best of it. She's making the best of this situation, and uh, she is ministering to him who has ministered to her, who has not embarrassed her, who have not shamed her, who has not rejected her. Uh, there seems to be no hope that she can be free from her sin. She don't have words. She don't have words. Remember, we said last week there are no words spoken. Sometimes there are, there's no need for words. At this point in time, there's no need for words because God looks at the heart. God sees the heart. At some point in time, you can say it, but right now, she is showing it. Words, glory to God, are good, but right now, she's showing, she's showing her gratitude. She's showing her appreciation for his, for his goodness toward her. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, and it goes on because you can't, can't change what you've, what you've been. You can't change your past. Your past is that. Your sins are what they are. You did do it. You did live this way. You did shack up. You did commit adultery. You did fornicate. You did commit homosexuality. Now, all of these things, you were all of these things. You can't change that. Hallelujah, but in the presence of an almighty God, in the presence of one who is so loving and so ready to forgive. Hallelujah, and I'm looking at her heart, dark and black it might be. Hallelujah, but she is so grateful for the opportunity. Somewhere she's heard a word of hope coming from the mouth, glory to God, of this man that she's ministering to. She may not know him in his fullness, but what he's shown her and how he's cared for her. 
hallelujah, and shown her love, she just don't have the words to say. So everything that she's doing uh, comes out from the, comes from the inside and it causes her to begin to minister from her very being. No words spoken. Everything is coming from within. Can't change her past. Can't deny in the presence of a holy, holy savior. Her heart is broken. Hallelujah. Nobody has ever lifted her up or tried to. Simon should have been one of those people. He's a religious leader. He should have been one of those people who tried to encourage and lift her up and, and let her know that there's hope, daughter. You don't have to live this way. I want you to know that God loves you and he's, he wants to forgive you, but he is too busy padding his resume about how righteous he might be. And I need you to know we have to be careful. There is no showing of mercy and love to her from people who should know God. Hallelujah. She hasn't received that. She's only received it from this stranger, this person who now she has the opportunity to show how much she appreciates. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Her appreciation. She's ministering. And now Jesus addresses this Simon concerning this woman who is doing for me, what you failed to do. She has recognized something about this situation, the moment. See, this is a moment. This is a Kairos moment. She's not about to let this pass. Hallelujah. There are times we have that moment. It's that moment that we have to embrace. We have to, we have to seize that moment because you may not get that one again. And let people laugh. Let them talk. She's allowed herself to be embarrassed if they want to call her that. And she takes, she takes a man uh, 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 a chance that she could be thrown out of this house. Yeah. Embarrassed even further. Simon allows her to do all of these things on our Lord. To heap all of this affection, appreciation. On the Lord, but his reason is that he's assigning blame to Jesus. Hallelujah. And allowing this sinner to minister because he's trying to bring about a discredit upon the Lord, if I'm saying that right. But the scripture goes on to say that Jesus points out that the, as dark as her past is, there are qualities about this woman, hallelujah, that's God-like, <laughs> that's host-like. That, see, Simon the host should have been, but she's operating as the host. And he says in verse 44, seest thou this woman? You see her? I came into your house. I came to minister in, to, came to, to, to eat at your table and you gave me no water for my feet. Not only did you not prepare someone to wash my feet, you didn't give me any water for me to wash my feet. My Lord, how thoughtless, how careless. Oh Lord, look at here. And, but this woman, she has washed my feet with tears. In that day and time, they ate reclining on the side, on, to the side with their feet away from the table. So she's standing in a position to wash his feet. They are reclining to, as they're leaning and reclining at, at meal, this woman is ministering to her feet, to his feet, excuse me. You didn't give me any water. You didn't give me any water and you didn't allow your servants to do so. But this woman has washed my feet with her tears. This woman who you have such disdain for, 
who you have such disregard for. She has done what it is that you should have done. Thou gavest me no kiss. But from the time I came in your house, she has been kissing my feet. God Almighty. Hallelujah. I came. She has been kissing, ministering to my feet. Ministering to my feet. Ah, oh, my Lord. This woman that you say in your heart, because you didn't say it verbally out, out loud, you said it from your heart. She's a sinner. This woman did stuff you didn't do. My head with oil you did not anoint. You didn't anoint my head with oil. You didn't give me common courtesy. You didn't offer me common courtesy. You didn't minister to me and you did not show appreciation and value for me. Glory to God. Though you are, you are the host in, in, as far as inviting me, she's doing and operating and functioning as the host, as she's ministering to me. And she has anointed my feet with ointment. You didn't touch my head, but she lowered herself to, to anoint my feet with ointment. Wherefore, and here is the blessing, glory to God, her humility, her brokenness. And the Lord knows that there's a need. God knows that you have a need. He knew that I had a need. And he knows that she has a need, so he goes to minister to her needs. She's broken, glory to God, not because she didn't give an invitation to the meal. She's broken because she is alienated from God. Her life is a dark, dark tapestry of sin. And Jesus is about to rewrite her story. He's about to paint another picture, make a masterpiece out of her life. Glory to God. So he says, wherefore I say, and he's talking to Simon about her, wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, not yours, her sins, <laughs> which are many, can't change that, can't change the fact. Yes, she is a sinner. Yes, amen. She's, she's probably one of those women whose reputation is astounding. Her sins, which are many. Some of us have some, oh my God, some horrible, horrible things that we've done. Sin in itself is horrible. For her sins, which are many. He did not minimize the fact that she, she had done these things. He did not excuse them. The fact that she was a sinner. Her sins, he did not pretend that they weren't there because she did some good deed. See, here's the thing, that the good deeds in itself won't save. Hallelujah. This woman was good, doing good deeds, but her good deeds won't save her. Hallelujah. Her good deeds were not going to save her at all. Glory to God. It was not her good deeds that were going to save her. And so as we look at this, so wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven. For she loved much. Mm. Wow. She loved much. Is it possible that a lot of the things that she did was because she loved much? She thought that this was how to love. It's amazing. Could it be that one of the reasons she's in the mess that she's in is because she's been trying to operate. She's been trying to give to get. I don't know. 
But I do know that at this point, at this point, her love is overflowing because it's not in word only. It's not in word only. She's ministering to a man who don't want her body. She's ministering to a man who has no other motive than to show her love, to bless her. Her, her sins, which are many, she's loved much. She has loved a lot. Glory to God. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. She loves a lot because she is forgiven. She wants forgiveness. She, she don't have the right words. I want to be forgiven. I, I, I want to be able to walk out of here with my head up. I want to be able to walk out of here knowing that my life is clear, that my record is clean, that I am not a notorious sinner. Hallelujah. Let people laugh, but I'll know. I'll know that my sins are washed away. And here, here it is. Jesus puts the cap on it and he says, verse 48, and he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. Woo! Hallelujah! She was waiting on those words. I believe, glory to God, it thrusts her forth, hallelujah, from darkness into light. Glory to God. Her whole life changes because the master says, your sins are forgiven. Wow, that is powerful. That is so powerful. And the guest, this is the guest that makes these statements. And the people, they, there were people at meat sitting there eating, and they began to say within themselves, who is this that forgives sins also? And he said something else to this woman and seeing that Jesus ignored those thoughts and he went on to speak to her. Glory to God because as of yet, as of yet, hallelujah, he, she has not been spoken to or have spoken until verse 48. Jesus says to her, thy sins are forgiven. And verse 50, he says, thy faith has saved thee. Glory to God. Go in peace. You can leave here without, amen, the heavy burden you came with. You can leave here without the shame. Glory to God. You can leave here knowing that I am washed from my sins. In the, in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and verse 9 says, For by grace are ye saved. Through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Glory to God. Not of works. Least any man should boast. Simon is based, is, 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 based is, 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 is hoping that his good works is going to be enough. His affiliation with this, this Pharisee group. Amen. His notoriety in the community and even good things he's done is going to going to garner him salvation. But this woman knows that she's got none of that. And so it is her faith. See, it was her faith that saved her. It wasn't her hair. It wasn't her tears. It wasn't her lips on his feet or the ointment that he, she wiped his feet with. I'm telling you, her faith. Her faith, she believed him. She believed on him. It was saving grace. It was the grace of God. It was her faith in him. Glory to God. In spite of all of the negativity, in spite of all of the abuse, in spite of all of those things that was transpiring around her, all of the bad feelings, the atmosphere was charged with foolishness and, 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 and the fact that she was not welcome there and but she did not allow that to stop her from loving. She showed him love. She, he, she believed on him. Even Simon could not say that. Glory to God. See, her sins, which are many, which does not mean that Simon didn't have a lot of sins, but it just want, wanted to show him that that you, you, you're, you're judging, you're, you're, you're assigning 
great sin to her, but you don't understand. Glory to God, you both need forgiving. And you may think that yours are small and, and insignificant, but you both need the same Savior. You need the same blood. This woman had faith. Glory to God. It don't say later on what happened to her. Ah, uh, but we know, I believe, unwritten, but also insinuated <laughs> that when she left that room, glory to God, that the tears could stop. And if they were tears, they ceased to be tears of grief. They now have become tears of joy. Hallelujah. I believe that she became one who went on to live a life because of salvation, because of appreciation, because of the fact, amen, that she was forgiven and that he showed her love. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord, that now she could go on and live a life. There was hope. There was hope that was re re released in that room and expectancy that where she could go past and live past all of the negativity, that, that, that the stain, the stain that was on her life and on her reputation, although people would still try to assign that, that's not me. That's not me anymore. That's where I was with, until I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I, and he forgave me. It is through grace. It is through grace we are saved. By grace we are saved through faith, excuse me. Hallelujah. This woman was saved. She didn't just come, amen, and, 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 and try to pull on Jesus to get some question answered or find fault. She had enough stuff going on in her life. She needed, she needed real help. Simon left, when Jesus left Simon's house, it would seem to me that he left Simon in the same condition that he was when he came there. It would seem to me that he's still one who is going to have to stand before God uncovered, no blood. The blood of Jesus didn't, didn't wash him because he had opportunity and he failed to see the fact that he needed the Lord. Well, what's going to happen to this woman? This woman leaves this house justified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She may be un unpopular with yet the Pharisees and all the guests that were at that meeting, but she left that place justified. Her sins are forgiven. She's no longer, amen, a sinner. She is a woman who has been blood washed and blood bought. She is one who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. And her sins are forgiven. She left that house forgiven. The guests had forgiven her. The guests had freed her. Hallelujah. She's no longer carrying the burden of her past. She's no longer living, oh, glory to God, with the shame of her past. He washed her white as snow. This is what the guests did. And she only operated as the host, although it was not her house, she loved him. She loved on him. And I want you to know the Lord is waiting for you that don't know him and may not have accepted him. I want you to know he loves you. And you may be thinking that you've done some things, that so much stuff that there's no way he could love me. Well, it's not true. That's the lie Satan wants you to buy into. He will forgive you. You're under conviction. Someone right now is under conviction. The Holy Spirit is convicting you of your sins. And all he's asking you to do is to repent and ask him to forgive you. And invite him to come into your heart. Hallelujah. You can go home or go to your next, the next level of where you are going to be, or your job or your business or whatever it is, justified. Knowing that you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, that faith, by faith are you saved yes, yes. through grace. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God, the gift. In other words, he gives it. 
He gives the, he gives the grace. He gives the faith. Hallelujah. All he asks you to do is, act, is, is, is activate it. Respond. She responded. She moved. She served. She ministered. She was broken. Don't know what she said with her mouth because we have no record. But her heart, said, her, her heart spoke volumes. Her actions from her heart. Glory to God showed that she loved us, that her faith was there. That she believed in him. The only name under heaven given among men whereby mankind can be saved. That is through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to offer that to you this morning that this person we've been talking about, the guest who came to Simon's house, the host, supposedly Simon was the host in, in name only, but this woman became the host. She ministered, she served, she entertained. She took time to love him, appreciate, value, hallelujah, to show gratitude. I want you to know that the Lord is waiting on you. He loves you and not willing that you perish, but that you will have eternal life. Hallelujah. He's waiting for you to invite him to come into your heart, your home, your life. Hallelujah. He, he may be, glory to God, the guest right now, but it is his desire to become the master of the house. He wants to sit on the throne of your heart and rule your spirit, your soul, and your body. Hallelujah. But right now, he's standing on the outside. Will you invite him in? Will you say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Will you please forgive me for my sins? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I confess you with my mouth. I believe on you with my heart. Hallelujah. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. From this moment forward, I will live for you. Hallelujah. It's just that simple. Glory to God. Will you do that today? And I'm believing that you have, and I'm believing that since you have, that you are going to, you're going to find a way to get to where you can learn more about this Savior, this guest that was, your, that was a guest, and now he has become Lord of your life. And ultimately, ultimately, he becomes master of your heart and master of your destiny. Will you let him be that? I want to say thank you so much for hearing the word of God. And I'm expecting, anticipating, if I never see you here on earth, I pray to see you in heaven. Tell me the story when we see each other. Will you bow your heads with us? Father, in Jesus' name, I am so grateful. Thank you, Lord, for this word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that it touches the heart of every person that has heard it that it would change the lives of people who are near and far. And God, that you would be our Lord and Savior and that you would occupy every room of our hearts, live in our lives, bring us to a, close, bring us to a place of a closer relationship. Oh God, closer, bring us closer still. Father, we ask that you would take a residence in our hearts and, and in our lives and that you will live in us and we'll live through you and we'll give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.